Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the third of 15 videos in the mobile weather app series. A link to the app website is in the description below, as well as links to the other 14 videos in this series. In this video, we'll be creating the model from our JSON so that we can decode the data from our API. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notification when new videos in this series and others are released. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. And if you feel inclined to support my work, you can always buy me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the description below. No pressure though. Well, now that we have our JSON returned, it's time to build our app. However, before I jump into that, I'm going to start with a playground and use it for testing calls to the API. That way I don't have to worry about building the UI just yet. And if I'm careful, we'll be able to copy over any code that we have in the playground over to the real app when we're ready. Now, in the last video, we created an API endpoint URL for our location, and we're going to use this to create a model for our project. So copy that URL once more, and then go to this JSON formatter site and paste the URL in here and process it. I'll leave a link to this site in the description below. This formats the JSON nicely, and you really can't build your model unless you have a clear view of the structure of your JSON. Now, a JSON response is either a single object, like you see here, or it's an array of objects. In any case, we'll need to create a decodable model so that we can decode our data when we fetch it. Let's just take a closer look at this object. First, we see that there are four key value pairs that are simple types like doubles and strings. This is followed by a key whose value is an array of objects. This means that we're going to have to create a property that will be an array of objects. The object itself has a number of simple key value pairs like date, sunrise, and sunset. And then we see another key named temp, whose value is another object with some key value pairs. There's another key with an object feels like. There are some more simple key value pairs, and then one called weather, where the value is an array of objects. And finally, there are some other key value pairs of simple types. Now there are eight items in this array, one for the current day and one for each of the subsequent seven days. So our job now is to create the model. Now I'm going to do the work, as I said, in the playground ahead of time. So open up Xcode and create a new playground, and I'm going to call mine Weather App. First, I will create a struct that will represent our object from our JSON. And I'm going to call it Forecast, and I have to make sure that it conforms to the quotable protocol. Let's also arrange our screen so that we can see our playground and our JSON and the same screen. When you create your model, you don't have to use all of the key value pairs from your JSON. For example, I don't want to use these first four in my app, so I'm going to ignore them. And this means then that we come across this first key, which is daily, that is an array of objects. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a struct called daily within our forecast struct and make sure that it conforms to the quotable protocol. And then below it, I can create our property daily, which is an array of those daily objects. Now working down through daily, of these first three key value pairs, the only one I'm interested in is DT, which is the date. So within the daily struct, I'll create a property, let date, of type date. Next up is a key where the value is another object. So this is going to require a new struct before I can create my property. So we'll call it temp and make sure that it conforms to the Codable protocol as well. Within that temp struct, I'm only interested in min and max, and both of these are doubles.
Moving on, I'm going to completely ignore this object that feels like altogether. And of the next five key value pairs, all I want is humidity, which is an int. So let humidity of type int. Next up is the weather key, which is an array of objects. So we'll need to create a struct that represents one of those objects, and we'll call it weather. And it has to conform to the quotable protocol too. And with that created, we can create a property called weather that is an array of those objects. From this object, all I'm interested in are the description and icon, which are both strings. Now, I had to re-record this video, and in subsequent videos, you'll see that I have included the ID property as well. It's an int, it's not required, but so as not to confuse you in the future, I'll add it here, but just know that it's not required. And then finally, we have these four properties. If you scan the eight array items, you'll discover that clouds is always represented by an int, and it represents the percentage of clouds, whereas POP is the probability of precipitation, and it's represented as a double. The rain and UVI keys do not appear in every array. So if we were to use them in our model, they would have to be created as optionals. I'm not, I'm just gonna use clouds and POP so I can complete my model with let clouds int and let POP as a double. Now there's one more thing I wanna do and that's to take a close look at this icon property within the weather struct. If we visit the API docs, we see that this represents the weather icon ID. And if we go back to the one call API and scroll down to the fields in the API response, and then down again to just the daily section, remember we excluded the other ones, and if you go to this link here, we'll see that the icon is a string that represents a PNG image that can be found with this base URL, where the icon string is just this. So I'm gonna create a computed property in our model that is just the URL so that we can use it in our app. Within our weather struct, you can create a new property then called weather icon URL of type URL. And we can create a URL string and paste in the URL and then use string interpolation to replace this fixed icon here with our icon property instead. Of course, this could fail, but I'm gonna take a chance here that the icon will always have an image provided by Open Weather Map. So I'm going to force unwrap. Probably not a great idea, but, but I'm gonna live dangerously here. And that now completes the building of our model. In the next video, we'll build an API service to retrieve and decode our JSON. We're going to make it generic so that we can use it not only for this API, but for any API in the future.